So you are on the market for a laptop that can edit 4K video, do some 3D CAD modeling or 3D animation and much more. Whether it's for college, uni or work, I will recommend five laptops that will cover your need at a budget ranging from £250 all the way up to £7,500. My name is Naz and I have been an IT manager for a global design and engineering business for over 12 years. And I have been creating my own YouTube content for just over two years as a hobby. I have posted over 30 4K videos predominantly laptop and tech reviews and guys I've edited every single one of those videos using this laptop which costs as little as £250. First things first when you're on the hunt for the laptop generally in the UK people will tend to go to PC World or even visit their website. Laptops Direct is another option. For those of you in the US you will probably use Best Buy. If we head over to their website and have a look and search for laptops now viewing the product details we can see that the laptop brand and model is displayed following the screen size. We will start with the screen size which is measured in inches. It is the distance between the bottom left and the top right. Generally speaking they range from 12 inch all the way up to 17 inch and in my opinion a comfortable workable screen size is 15.6 inches. Also something to consider is weight which increases as you go up in screen size. Next up is screen resolution which for photo and video editing is very important. Typically there are four options starting with full HD, full HD plus, quad HD and 4K and these are the measurements in pixels. At the bare minimum, you want a full HD screen. And as you go up in scale, it generally means you can fit more on your screen, but as a result, it gets more expensive. However, all the laptops I'll be showing you today have the ability to plug in at least one external screen in, and better still, they all have Thunderbolt docking capability, which allows you to plug in up to four screens at 4K resolution with only one cable via a docking station. This also includes your accessories like keyboards and mice. I'll get to that a bit later. Other things you might come across is OLED, IPS and LCD screen types. OLED are premium screen quality and generally demand higher prices. They are the very best option for someone who needs a very colour accurate screen. IPS is a good mix of quality versus cost. If you look at more laptop details, you might see these abbreviations when looking at laptop screen description. AG stands for anti-glare, which means the laptop screen has a special coating which reduces reflections. This is good if you have a window directly behind or intend to use your laptop outside or in very well lit areas. Often the brightness of the screen is also mentioned. This is measured in nits. Generally 250 nits is the lowest I would suggest going for and will be fine in well lit areas. If you are working outside in daylight, then you will want a higher nit screen and possibly anti-glare. These things can be found in the specification, but you need to go look. Now, the next thing we usually see is the processor. Generally, you have two big brands when it comes to Windows laptop, Intel and AMD. Now, Dell do use AMD processors in their consumer-based laptops. However, the business range all have the Intel chips. That is because they tend to be more stable for video editing, animation. So we are gonna stick with Intel's. Intel's naming convention are usually displayed as i3, i5, i7 and i9. Now these have generations too which give you an idea of how old the CPU is. The most important part of the processor is the number of cores. These range from 2 cores all the way up to 28. So cores process tasks so the more you have the better your CPU can multitask. Now I've noticed a lot of online laptop retailers such as Curry's or Laptops Direct here in the UK do show the processor but not show the number of cores and threads count on the initial preview. You generally have to go into further information to look for it. If you find yourself not able to find it, then in this case, you can just copy the processor and paste it into Google and you're looking for the intel.com search result. Here it will show you what generation it is and more importantly, the core count. What you are looking at is the number of cores. The higher, the better. It means you can multitask more. And I would recommend at least a six core processor for 4K video editing. Now the Intel branded processors have integrated graphics, which runs the display you're seeing, which is the desktop, or watching Netflix, you have got an integrated graphics churning away. So next you usually see the memory, the memory capacity or RAM, which is measured in gigabytes or GB for short. Computer memory is temporary storage. So when you open up an application, it loads into the RAM so it can access it quickly. So the more memory you have, the more amount of applications you can have open at the same time. And it makes working smoother. I would recommend at least 16 gigabytes of memory at the very least. Also, it's worth knowing that if you're buying a laptop in 2025, then you will want to ensure it has at least DDR4, with the preference being DDR5 memory. You then usually see storage capacity, and this is measured in GB or TB. 1000 gigabytes is one terabyte. If buying new, I would recommend having a solid state drive 
or SSD as shown here. Other words that are often used is NVMe, which is a faster interface comparing it to the old SATA SSD drives. Most modern drives will have NVMe's. These type of storage will ensure you have quick loading times when booting up and opening up applications. I would only recommend HDD storage. These are the old style spinning disks if you need to back up large amounts of data, they are significantly cheaper. I would not recommend using them as a primary drive. In an ideal world, you would want at least a 512 gigabyte primary drive for installing applications and software and a one terabyte secondary storage drive. However, if you're on a budget, then 512 gigabytes is the bare minimum. On the flip side, having a larger storage, you run the risk of getting lazy, not archiving or backing up with your data, which potentially could lead you to losing all your data. Trust me, I've seen this many times before. Onto graphics or graphics processing unit. If you're watching this video, then you are more likely to want a dedicated graphics card. This piece of hardware gives you more capability during 3D modeling, gaming, or when exporting 4K videos. Next to the card, it usually displays the video memory capacity which is measured in gigabytes or GB, also known as the Video Random Access Memory or VRAM. This is the dedicated memory on the graphics card that stores and manages data related to graphics and video processing. Again, you want to know the recommended requirements of the application you intend to use to determine how much VRAM is needed. The good news, if you have a laptop that is only a few years old, the integrated graphics can do basic 4K editing as I can prove a little later on. Now, this is something that isn't showing on the initial preview here, but battery life is measured in watt hours. So the higher figure generally means the more capacity it has. However, when you introduce dedicated cards, they tend to eat the battery life. Now to put what I explained in practice, here I am opening Adobe Premiere. And if you open up Task Manager, you can see all the components and what they are doing. The CPU is working here. Here I am opening one of my projects and we can see in real time the CPU memory and disk working. Here I am exporting and we can see the CPU memory, disk and GPU processes increasing. Now on to some recommendations. The laptops I am also showing you today are Dell's business range. And yes, they are more expensive than the consumer equivalent, but they use much better quality parts and will last you at least five years plus. Also something worth noting, those of you who are using them for professional work, architecture 3d modeling the gpu is designed specifically to run with the types of applications you intend to use at the lower end of the budget between 250 to 500 pounds you will be definitely going down the second hand route although you can buy brand new laptops at this figure i would not recommend those this is my personal dell precision 3541 and yes this is a six-year-old laptop i put the full specification in the description as long as some slightly newer models so you can have a search for those and there are dozens available given the laptop is over five years old it's not super thin but it's not heavy either just weighing over 2.1 kilograms or 4.6 pounds it's finished in a very dark gray almost black not the prettiest laptop however at this budget and age you cannot expect groundbreaking designs it's a workhorse and does its job the full hd screen which is 1920 by 1080 allows you to work comfortably if you're using the laptop screen itself. I have had no issues with this resolution. In applications like Adobe Premiere, it gives enough space to use it in editing mode. Processor wise, as mentioned earlier, I would recommend not going lower than six cores, which this 9th gen i7 has. I have had no bottlenecks with the processor. For example, it exports a 10 minute 4K video in three or four minutes. The base i7 model does come with 16 gigabytes of memory. However, I upgraded mine to 32 gigabytes, which anyone can do. I have created a video during one of my other laptop reviews, which shows you how to do this. Do I need 32 gigabytes? Not really. 16 gigabytes is as low as I would go for video editing. This came with a 512 gigabyte NVMe. And like I mentioned, it is the lowest I would go, especially if you were starting a YouTube channel or college or university. As you can see from the B-roll footage, I have upgraded mine to one terabyte and I'm over 30 videos in and I have 100 gigabytes left, but I haven't archived anything. Now you do have space to put a two and a half inch SSD drive, which can be bought very cheaply. So now the dedicated GPU inside here is the NVIDIA Quadro P620 with four gigabytes of VRAM. This is good enough to tackle 4K editing and 3D modeling as long as you're not working on complex models. So for someone starting a new YouTube channel or for basic 4K editing, then this is the perfect buy. Other models you may want to look at is the Dell Precision 3550. Now, if you have around 500 to 1,000 pounds to spend, here I have the Dell Latitude 5540. This has been replaced by the Latitude 5550, which I will review in the next few weeks. As you can see, they have modernized the design, 
It's finished in a silvery grey colour. This has the 15.6 inch Full HD non-touch anti-glare IPS with 250 nits. It has a Full HD IR camera so it's got the same screen size and resolution as my old Precision 3541. So comfortable to work on using the display. This is the minimum screen size and resolution I would recommend. The Full HD IR camera refers to the built-in webcam which is Full HD Infrared. This is a great feature as it allows you to log in using Windows Hello and makes it much easier to log in and out of your laptop. The processor in this is a 13th gen Intel Core i5-1345U V Pro with 12 megabytes of cache, 10 cores, 12 threads and up to 4.7 gigahertz on turbo. If we use my 9th gen i7 as a benchmark, the processor has four more cores. Obviously, it's a more modern processor, so it runs cooler and will outperform my 9th gen i7 in other areas. Now here is where things get interesting. This laptop has an integrated Intel Iris XE graphics, which is graphics on the chip. It does outperform my dedicated P620 in my six year old laptop, which shows you how much technology has developed. Okay, if you start modeling complex CAD, then you might struggle, but for 4K editing, the integrated GPU will work fine. I've recommended some older laptops within the price range with a dedicated GPU, but that is coming up. As mentioned, 16 gigabytes of memory is the bare minimum I would go for, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD drive in this ensures you can get straight into editing without doing any upgrades. The full review I did of this model just slightly differs in spec, with it having the slightly slower i5 i335U processor and 256 gigabyte NVMe. If you're interested in watching this video, then please click on the link above. At a budget of around £1,600, we move on to the more expensive and newer Precision range. Here I have the brand new Precision 3591, which is the latest model in the Precision 3000 series. The specification I have here has the latest Core Ultra 7 i55H processor. And if you remembered what I said about core counts earlier, and 6 being the minimum, well this has 16 cores, 24 megabytes cache, 22 threads, so it will do extremely well with most tasks you throw at it. The model I reviewed here has the i65H processor, which runs slightly quicker. Screen wise, it's the same 15.6 inch Full HD screen, same as the Latitude 5540. The only real difference is it having the more powerful CPU and a dedicated GPU. This model, with its dedicated RTX 1000 ADA graphics, which has 6GB of GDDR6 memory and will easily cope with your 4K editing needs and complex 3D modeling. Perfect for those starting out with some money to spend, students and even professionals, and will easily last 5 years as I've proved with my older model. Again guys, the GPU and the processor is dependent on the specification of the application you are going to be using. And you do have the higher end A2000 with 8GB of GDDR6 available as an option if you select the i7 processor. Now if you want something more modern with a dedicated GPU and your budget doesn't quite reach, then consider the slightly older Precision 3590 or 3581. These can also be found between 500 to 1000 pound mark and there are loads on sale on eBay. Moving on with a budget of around 3000 pounds, we have the Precision 5690. I did a full review here. This model offers a slightly larger 16 inch screen with a full HD plus resolution of 1920 by 1200. It's got the very powerful Ultra 7 processor, which will handle anything you throw at it. The sashi is made up of aluminium, so feels and looks better than the 3591. They've done away with the USB ports and you get two Thunderbolt USB-C ports with display and one USB-C display alternative. You do get a dongle with a HDMI port and a USB-A port. Within this budget, it comes with 32 gigabytes of memory, so plenty to meet most application demands. This also includes the RTX 2000 ADA. If you customize it, you are offered more higher end GPU options with this model, but that price will increase massively. The RTX 2000 ADA is perfectly fine and future proof for you 4K video editors and it will probably suit most CAD designers. However, check the application you intend to use to figure out its recommended GPU with the selection you are offered. You're bound to find one that meets your needs and budget. This also comes with a one terabyte SSD storage. So again, plenty enough for content creators, but you may want to consider external storage for backing up at a later stage. Now the model I reviewed comes with a top of the range RTX 5000 and the full spec on Dell's website was over 6,000 pounds. 
So check out that review here. Expect the battery life to last around 67 hours of browsing and video conferencing. If you start to use that dedicated graphic, then it will last only a few hours. It's excellent to game with too. I have demonstrated in my full review. The only downside to this is they don't have any USB-A ports. For me as an IT professional, I would prefer to have an Ethernet port which this does not have, but what it lacks in parts, it gains in quality and feel. Also consider the 5680, which I also reviewed. You can pick these up cheaper, or the 5570, which on eBay, there are some great specifications available. Finally, for those of you with money to burn, if you have over seven and a half thousand pounds, we have Dell's top of the range model, the Precision 7000 series, or specifically the 7780. I have pretty much ticked all the top of the range options to get to this price point. This range starts at £1,500, but that is very basic spec with no dedicated GPU. If I truly selected all the top options, it would cost you over £10,000. Now this laptop you're seeing in the B-roll footage is the 7770, which is just one generation older. So it has a 12th gen processor instead of the 13th gen. However, it's got a 4K screen, just like in the stream spec. In my opinion, even with the 17 inch screen at 4K, it's difficult to see things. Here I have Premiere open, and it could be my age, but it's hard to see. Most people will have the zoom function enabled, so really, there isn't any point getting a 4K screen, or is there? Yes, only if you don't plan to dock the laptop to larger screens. This Dream Spec has the top of the range i9 processor with 24 cores, 36 megabyte cache, and 32 threads, so it will handle anything you throw at it. The 7000 range supports up to 128 gigabytes of memory, which this spec has. It also includes the RTX 5000 ADA GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now this review model I have here only has the entry level A1000. In terms of ports, you have all the ports you will ever need, but this thing does weigh a lot. The good thing about this model is that it has four additional drive bays in total. So over time, you can install yourself additional disks if needed. Or if you need loads of storage capacity, this is your only option as the next model down only has two bays. The specification I recommended has a two terabyte NVMe SSD, which can be used by your OS and applications and a four terabyte additional drive where you can store your work. Now, those of you who are curious who would spend this much money, well, it's common in business spending this amount of money. Usually these specs are determined by the application the laptop is used for. For example, 3D scanning software demand these high specs. And if you are an engineering company, the time you save scanning an object to reverse engineer outweighs the cost of the laptop itself. I mean, you could be saving thousands of hours, that alone justifies the spend. So essentially, you need to look at the laptop as an investment. And as I mentioned earlier, Dell's precision range has the ISV certificate, which applications such as this will run smoothly and reliably which is exactly what you want paying these premiums. If you wanted to get a good price, then look at the 7770, as you can get great deals on the second-hand markets. Dell's prices are expensive, unless you have corporate pricing. I've mentioned docs throughout this video, and here is Dell's WD22 TB4 dock, which I reviewed. It allows you to dock all these laptops I've shown in this video with just one Thunderbolt cable. And with this cable, you can connect up to four monitors at 4K resolution and all your preferences like keyboards and mice. It's a total game changer when it comes to productivity. Bear in mind that if you're going for the 5000 or 7000 series, you may need a different dock with a more powerful power supply. I'm displaying my two 27 inch Dell screens and it just makes editing a lot easier and vastly improves productivity whilst I am editing. Out of all these laptops, I would pick the Precision 3591. It does everything my current Precision does, but with it being newer, it will do everything much faster and at £1,600, it's a great price point. You can add an additional disc in later if required. It will be great for those entry-level content creators, students, or people like me who have stuck to their YouTube channel and want to make an investment and grow their channel, or even great for business use, as this is used by a lot of the design engineers where I work, and I have had no complaints. I hope you enjoyed the video and I've learned something new from it. If you found it useful, then I would appreciate a thumbs up. And for more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.